Look at this thing. Looks like it's running pretty smooth to me. Look how smooth that is on grass. Now, definitely just like cleats in dirt, like this dirt here, it's gonna be a little rougher, as you can see. Look at the tracks it's leaving. And then definitely on the sidewalk, it's gonna be rough. I don't wanna ruin the cleats, but there you go. All right, welcome back. So today we are deciding what we're gonna do with the ESC on uh, the Mojave speed build. Now, let me grab uh, my phone, we'll read some of the comments. So I'm heading over to comments, there was 91 comments. And uh, my vote is keep the ESC the same. Here's another comment. Earl, my vote is for the Mamba Monster X8S since I found you here and you and Guy have received my interest in the RC again. Thanks again for all you do. Uh, here's another one. I want to be, I want it to be the XLX2, but on this because I trust your stance behind the Mamba Monster X8, I think it would be more fun as a challenge. So he's basically saying, stick with the Mamba Monster X8S. I, I was truly shocked because I was preparing to just leave these ends on and literally put the Mamba Monster or the XLX2 in here and call it a day. But going through the comments, it's 90% sticking with this one. And then everybody's saying if this one doesn't work out, then go ahead and put the XLX2 in there. And I got to be frank with you guys. If I stick with this one, I'm sticking with this one. I'm not putting the XLX2 in here because I have to change these ends. Um, and switching back and forth, back and forth, back and forth is a big waste of money. So, at least for me. So I've got the iron warming up. We're going to go ahead and get these ends changed out. I got three new ones here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to get these off. I'm going to try to save these uh, because I don't have many of these 8 millimeter bullets left. Because uh, these things are not cheap. There we go. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting these ends off. And as you see, I just don't want to keep having to cut the wire because then the motor wires are going to get really short.
go. Once we get it full, I'm going to straighten out the connector, make sure it's all the way in. And we're going to let that stuff cure and dry. So that it's straight. So the bullets aren't too hard to change. There we go. So we'll be right back. All right. So went ahead and gave it a minute to uh, cool down. Um, so now that I'm going to be running censored, one thing you really have to be careful of is uh, plugging in these wires in the wrong order. So we have A, B, and C. So the first one in the back is A, which looks like they're going to line up in order on the ESC, which is good. So A, B, so B, and C. All right. And my sensor wire's got to plug into this. My sensor wire's got to plug into this little white connector off the ESC. And just be careful not to uh, to ruin any of that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to plug in the computer system so that we can calibrate this motor um, to this. And we'll be cleaning up all these wires so everything sits nice. And I'll probably add some shrink tubing over here just so nothing touches it. It's not bad, but it is what it is. Um, but I want to get the computer set up so that we can, uh, we can go ahead and calibrate this 1717 to this ESC. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Be right back. All right, so went ahead and got the castle link plugged in, and what we're going to do is you're normally on this about screen. When you plug in, it shows you your ESC. We're going to head over to power, and then I checked the motor perform test. Um, when you check that and you hit OK, an error message will pop up telling you what you need to do about taking the pinion gear off. Do not perform this test with the pinion gear on. Pinion gear has to be off. So that's why I never installed the pinion gear when we installed this motor. So I got the sensor wire hooked up. I got the A, B, and C lined up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and perform motor test. So if you have any questions about it, go ahead and hit this check mark. But as you see, now it says motor test will start on next run. So in order for this to happen, you have to update this. So now that we've done this, we read our error message, we took our pinion off, we're going to go ahead and hit update. So now it's writing to the ESC about on our, on our next pull, we're going to go ahead and do a motor test. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. We're going to get over to the RC. All right, so back at the RC, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my radio. And I'm going to power up my radio. Make sure that it's on the car that you have. We're going to go ahead and unplug the castle link. We're going to plug it back into channel number two. Because we're going to have to pull full trigger. So, I probably should have checked motor direction, but it should be fine, because all this was set up before with the other motor. Get my cable out of the way so it doesn't get caught up into anything. Then I'm going to connect my batteries. 
could have had the batteries connected already, but just showing you what kind of I'm doing here. Let it arm normally. My switch was already on. So now we're going to pull full trigger. I'm still pulling full trigger and the motor stopped. Once it stops, let off the trigger. Go ahead and power it off. I'm gonna unplug the batteries. We're gonna take out channel number two and we're gonna hook it back up to Castle Link. So let me find my Castle Link wire. Brown is ground, which is this way. Yep, brown is ground. It turned green. We're going to head back down to the computer. I'm also going to turn off the radio. Unplug my booster. Let's get down to the screen. All right. So it says a new version for this firmware. I don't want the new version. It's now reading it. We're going to head over to power. And now it says motor data test has been acquired. And now it allows us to adjust this torque monitoring. All right, so I've got my Castle Link unplugged from channel number three. Now I wanted to show you guys something. Um, I get asked this question a lot. On the ESC right here, I'm gonna get these batteries out of here. On this ESC, it has this little white wire and um, you don't need to use it unless you're doing something like I'm doing here so I'm going to show you what you would use this white wire for so I'm going to go ahead and plug my ESC back in and now that my ESC is plugged into channel number two if you wanted to use this white wire, you would put it to your auxiliary wire or whatever auxiliary channel you have. So I have a channel number four here. If I wanted to use this, I would go ahead and put this into channel number four. Right? Plug that into channel number four. And then the way I would set it up on the castle link. So over at this power, like we were talking about, Motor test has been acquired, so torque limiting, on torque limiting, um, and this works really well for drag cars or, or that kind of stuff when you're trying to get the launch um, under control where you're hitting the trigger differently every time. So I have cleats on this RC, but I don't want it to wheelie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my torque limiting up to... Uh, We'll go halfway here. Let's set it up to 3.5. All right. I'm going to go ahead and update this. Now, every time I want to make a change to that torque limiting, I got to hook up the castle link. Or do I? If you hook up that white wire, you would go over to advanced. See right here where it says auxiliary wire mode? I have none. You would take your auxiliary wire mode and you'd go ahead and select torque control adjustment, right? So you would select that and then you would go ahead and update this. And now whatever channel you put that auxiliary wire to, like mine would be on number four. So on my controller, my auxiliary wire number four, I could, you know, a hundred per percent would uh, would be maximum on my torque limiting. Or if I go negative, you know, hundred um, percent, it'll be like disabled. So you can adjust it on the fly. That's what you would do if you want to use that auxiliary wire. I'm not drag racing. I've got maximum traction here, but I don't want it to wheelie. 
So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off. Update. And then power. My torque limiting is at 3.5. And now this is just the start um, to it. But I'm going to leave it disabled for now. Um, but that's what that torque limiting does. It allows you to launch your RC without it being out of control. So just so everybody's aware, um, that's just something you would do um, with that auxiliary white wire. Um, and you can assign it to all kinds of different things from what it says. That auxiliary white wire, uh, maximum power adjustment, reverse percentage, max brake. You can put it as a brake adjustment. You can use it as a drag brake, uh, reverse enabled and disabled. So if you want to turn it off and on for a speed run, uh, rock race and crawling mode. Um, so you can enable and disable the rock uh, race and crawling mode. So those are just a bunch of things that you could, you could do um, with that auxiliary wire, which is pretty cool. Um, cause then you don't have to hook up castle link every time. So I just wanted to put that out there. I get a lot of questions on, you know, what is that little white wire? Um, and it's just, it's whatever you want it to do. Um, somebody was saying it was, uh, for, uh, for motor RPM or something of that nature. Um, which it, it could be, you could set it up for power and then it controls how much power you're doing. So, just wanted to uh, put that out there because I don't think I've ever talked about this white wire and what it actually does. So hopefully this helps a bunch of people out there. Um, and if you're unsure, you can always hit the question mark in the Castle Link. And that's what I love about Castle Link and how much stuff you can do with this Mamba Monster X 8S. I mean, honestly, this ESC is a great, great controller. So let me get this stuff put away. We're going to get a pinion back on this thing. I'm probably going to just lose this. Well, yeah, I'm going to just lose this thing sticking up here so I can get my pinions in and out easier. And we'll be right back. All right, so I got the ESC button back up. And what was the next thing I was going to do? Um, I got to get the pinion on. But... It's a 34. So I have a 29 and a 30 in there. I might just start out with this 29 because 34 might be too much ripple um, with this KV. So I want to take it safe. So I'm probably going to stick in the 29 um, for now. <clears throat> and then uh, work my way up to 34. I honestly don't want to catch this ESC on fire. Uh, because I don't have a cat pack in it. Um, and I've talked about cat packs and what they do in the past. And uh, if you don't know, um, you should definitely uh, definitely not over gear your RCs, especially on speed runs, if you're unsure of what uh, of what your ripple is going to be. So we're going to start off uh, just just under one to one. Um, so because we've uh we've added a lot of kvs from 12 to 1600 kv so i am going to leave the 34 out for now gear in there. God, no. And I can't go any more in, can I? No. Well, there goes that idea. I'm going to put the 34 on it anyway and uh, keep an eye on my ripple because it's not, it's not meshing right with the 29. I literally have to change my spur gear and it's something i don't want to do right now so i guess we'll keep the gearing the same 1250's got a lot more torque on it and uh the ripple wasn't bad 
but we went up a lot on the KVs. I mean, we're not over the 2000 KV, so I'm not that worried about it because I have run a 2200 KV, a reverse geared like this. But I really wanted to, uh, to check and make sure that we're not, we're not in the danger zone. But it is what it is. But I prefer to run a 39. Or I mean the 30 or the 29. Versus running a, a 34 right off the bat. Reverse geared it because my spur is only, only at a 30. Which... I might end up switching this around and using this uh, this 34 as my spur, and then I can play with pinions. But there we go. That should be it. My motor thing. This. I always cut these heat sinks out so they don't get close to any of these terminals. And this is a, the same size can as a 12, as a 1250. So that'll plug right on. I'm going to get all the wiring cleaned up, get it back together. And we're going to get out and rip this thing and see what it'll do. But there we go. Like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully we learned a, a little bit, especially about the white wire on a castle system, what it does for your receiver. And hopefully you understand how to calibrate a censored motor for a castle system um, and what torque limiting does and how all this is going to benefit. Now that we have all this stuff installed, we'll be able to see motor temps, motor RPM, our horsepower is going to be correct. A lot of information that was in there is going to be correct now. But there we go. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you guys on my next video. Thanks for watching. Nope. Oh, that's a bad crash.